Hey everybody, Patton here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to add storage to your Sega Genesis Mini either through a USB flash drive or a micro SD card and reader. One of the most popular requests I've gotten since the release of HackGCE 3.7 is how to run Sega CD games. But that won't do us any good because of how little space we have on the system compared to how much we need to play these games. So I figured I'd show you how to use external storage before the Sega CD tutorial. First thing you want to do is hack your system with HackGCE. I'll have a tutorial video in my description you can watch on how to do that. Just insert your external storage into your PC, right click it, go to format. Select NTFS for the file system, make sure quick format is checked, and then hit start. Make a note of the drive letter for the USB drive you're going to use. When adding games to your flash drive, your system doesn't even have to be turned on or even connected to your PC. As noted with the red light in the bottom corner saying that our system is not connected to our computer. If you're the type of user that doesn't like to keep their system plugged into the PC, this is the method you want to go with. Just go down to export to USB, select the drive you're going to export your games to, and hit OK. Now I can't stress this enough, you want to use a good flash drive. Make sure that it reads and writes fast. It doesn't have to be super expensive. Any of those flash drives that you get from Walmart or Amazon.com should work okay. But I was using an older flash drive to do this and I kept getting error after error because it's an old flash drive, it's very slow. To really get things to be reliable, make sure you're using a decent flash drive. Also, it does not matter if you have a 3.0 or 2.0 flash drive, they both will work fine. You won't get 3.0 speeds because the USB slots in the system are only 2.0. But the faster drive you have, the quicker this will be and the better some games will run on your system with FMVs. Once that's complete, the contents of your flash drive may pop up on your screen. So you'll have your drive letter, HackG, Games, MDUSA, or your equivalent, and then a folder with a bunch of zeros. If you go into this folder, you'll see these are the game folders that HackG created. Going in here shows our game files along with the box art. And that's all there is to it. There's a couple ways to attach this flash drive to your Sega Genesis Mini. Of course, you can use the second controller port, but HackGCE 3.7 allows you to use what's called an OTG adapter. This adapter plugs into the back of your system where your micro USB power cord would go. And they come in different sizes and variations, some with only one USB slot and some with many. There is one, however, that we do not recommend, and that is the Inatech adapter. These were highly recommended a couple years ago and they were the best ones to use, but unfortunately it seems in recent years the company made some kind of hardware change to them and they no longer are supported by the minis. The one I specifically use is called an octopus adapter. I prefer it because it has a lot of USB slots for different things like a Wi-Fi adapter or Bluetooth, or additional controllers and of course expanded storage. A lot of people don't care for the octopus adapter, but I've had two of these that I've been using consistently for the past two years and they work perfectly for me. The problem is the wires are extremely thin, so if you're not careful, you can break them easily. But again, if you're like me and you're careful, these will work just fine for you. So I'm going to safely remove the USB drive from my PC, plug it into the Genesis Mini and start it up. As you can see here, we have all six of our Sega CD games on here. There is no way we would be able to fit these without using some kind of extra storage. So this is just showing that it's working correctly. Let's boot one up to make sure that it starts. Here's our Sega CD BIOS screen. Gonna hit the start button. The game loads up just fine and it looks and sounds great. It doesn't get much easier than that, just export using HackGCE, plug it into your system and you're ready to go. I do have one more thing I want to show you guys before I end the video. If you're one of those users that doesn't mind keeping their console hooked up to the PC the whole time, you have a nice little feature here. If we look at the bottom of HackG, you see that our storage is showing what's on our USB. And not only that, if you have your USB drive plugged into your system and the system plugged into your PC, when you want to add new games, you don't hit the export to USB button anymore. You would hit the synchronized selected games with mini button. And any games you have selected in your menu will be moved directly to your USB drive. 
Using this method, you don't have to keep unplugging the USB drive from your system and putting it in your PC. You can simply leave it in there and then sync the games directly to the drive. And that is all I have for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to go to the Rock and the Classics Discord I have linked in the description. Somebody there will be able to assist you with any problems that you're having. Make sure you keep coming back because I'm going to show you guys how to do a lot more with your Sega Genesis Mini, such as playing Sega CD games. That one will be out very soon. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Eric Cologne, Jordy Alex, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Dor, Yaroslav Orudzov, Den Cardoso, Andre G, Randy Day, and Batman.